God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit promised to be with us. Our mindset, come and see. We welcome you to Agape. We're glad you're here. Over the mountain, over the mountain, through the deep end. Don't you know that Jesus has said, I, well, the Lord said, I'm never going to say, oh, Lord, that's the promise, divine word, promise that never can fail, oh, oh, heavenly heaven. Good afternoon. My name is Marcus Ford. I'm one of the members and Bible class teachers here at the Agape Church of Christ, where Brother Grayland Andrew Freeman is our minister and evangelist. As students of the Word, we believe in speaking where the Bible speaks and being silent where the Bible is silent. We take our example from Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, where when he was asked to lead in worship, he opened the book and found the place where it is written. And with that, we'd like to welcome you to today's broadcast. Brother Freeman, always a pleasure to share the panel with you. Marcus, indeed. Absolutely. So today's question, there are religious beliefs and they advocate any number of differing scenarios that will transpire upon our death. And so at the end of our life, as it were, are you able to open the book and find a place where it is written that teaches that only 144,000 will be in heaven? while the other redeemed people will remain here on earth? And does the Bible teach the doctrine of a heavenly class or an earthly class? I tell you, Marcus, this question, or rather it's concern, it stems from a true misunderstanding and an inappropriate interpretation of what we understand to be apocalyptic writing from the book of Revelation. It is a classic misunderstanding of what the Bible says as opposed to what the Bible teaches. And we've advanced any number of times here on the place where it is written that the Bible says a number of things, but it does not teach everything that it says. And that's why we are compelled in Scripture to rightly divide the word of truth, study and extract from the word of God to see what the exegetical study is, what the hermeneutics is of the scripture itself. Our denomination makers, they draw an inappropriate conclusion from not rightly dividing the word of truth. In Revelations chapter 7 and verse number 4. In Revelations 14 verses 1, 2, and 3. There the Bible references 144,000. And when our denominational neighbors read this, they interpret the 144,000 incorrectly. They treat it as if it's to be understood to be a literal number. So let's do this. Marcus, let's open the book. Let's find the place where it's written. Let's go to Revelation 7, verse number 4, and then immediately let's go to Revelation 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. And let's see what thus saith the Lord is. Revelation 7, verse number 4. What does the Bible say? Revelation 7 and 4 says, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. All right. Revelation 14. Revelation 14, verses 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sinai, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and it was a voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. When we read Revelation 7 and verse number 4, John says he heard the number that was seated, 144,000. In Revelations 14, verses 1, 2, and 3, he says he saw the 144,000 or heard this number before the throne, along with the elders and the, and the other angels. Yet to make this a literal interpretation of this number, it would result in the following wrong conclusions. First, if one concludes 
that the 144,000 are the heavenly class into which no one else is going to be admitted, then the literal conclusion is that only the Israelites are going to be going to heaven. Because the Bible affirms in Revelations 14 and verse number 3 that the 144,000 are said to be the ones redeemed from the earth. They're redeemed from the earth. And since we know, reading Revelations 5 and verse number 9, that the redeemed are actually out of every kindred, in every tongue, in every people, in every nation, we must conclude that there are those in heaven who are not going to be Israelites. And yet the 144,000 are made up only of the Israelites. Then too, remember that the Revelator John, he states that the 144,000 are composed, as I said, of the tw of 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. But if we read Revelation 14, where the 12 tribes of Israel are listed, one has to wonder, why is no one from the tribe of Dan included? Because the tribe of Dan is omitted in this list of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. A literal interpretation of this number would fix it so that only males, markets and males who were virgins would be going to heaven. Yet we know this is not the case because as the Hebrew writer, he numbers a, a host of heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, concluding that they all died in faith, but they were being preserved so that the Christian era, those who lived and died in the Christian era, would receive the promise along with them. Friends, please read at your leisure Hebrews 11, verses 39 and 40. Now, if John is affirming in Revelations chapter 7 that only 144,000 will be in heaven because they are before the throne, he immediately contradicts himself because in verse 9 of Revelations chapter 7, he writes these words, After this I beheld and lo, a great number, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, they stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes. Now, let's note this question and let's answer from the scripture. Where, Brother Marcus, is the throne? Where is the throne? Because the Bible says that the 144,000 are before the throne. Let's open the book. Let's find the place where it's written. Let's go to Revelations chapter 4. Let's read verse number 2. Revelations 4, verse number 2. What does the Bible say there, Marcus? In Revelations 4 and 2, it says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. A throne was set where? In heaven. A throne was set where? In heaven. Where? In heaven. The Bible says the throne was set in heaven. And what about it? And one sat on the throne. Now, according to Revelation 14 and verse number 3, the 144,000 are where? The Bible says they are before the throne. But according to Revelation 7 and verse number 9, the great multitude are before the throne. If the great multitude is before the throne and 144,000 are before the throne and the throne is set in heaven then we must conclude that the great multitude is in heaven as well Revelation 7 verse number 15 the great multitude and 144,000 the Bible says serve him day and night in his temple let's read that let's go to Revelation 7 verse number 15 Revelation 7 brother Marcus and verse 15. What does the Bible say there? And the Bible reads, Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. All right. 144,000, the great multitude, serve him day and night in his temple. Now the question is, where is the temple? Where is this temple? Let's go to Revelation 11, verse number 19. Let's open the book. Let's find the place where it is written. Revelation 11, verse number 19. What does the Bible say there, Brother Ford? And the Bible reads, And the temple of God was opened in heaven. It opened where? In heaven. Where? In heaven. The Bible says the temple of God was opened in heaven. Now, my friends, seeing that the temple is in heaven, and the great multitude is serving in the temple, along with 144,000 before the throne, which is also in heaven, here's what we must conclude. We must conclude that the 144,000 and the great multitude are one in the same group. He's not talking about a heavenly class separated from an earthly class. These are they whom John writes 
have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. These are they who have come through great tribulation, who have made, been made white, their robes white, rather, in the blood of the Lamb. This in accordance with Revelation 7 and verse number 14 and 15. Now watch, this washing, this washing has direct reference to the washing accomplished in the watery grave of baptism. Let's open the book. Let's find the place where it is written. Acts 22 and verse number 16. Brother Ford, what does the Bible say there? Acts 22 and 16, the Bible reads, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. When are sins remitted, my friends? When are sins, according to the scripture, washed away? Ananias told Saul, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized. Wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. This is a direct reference of what the Revelator John was utilizing. There will be no earthly class. There will be no heavenly class because the Bible affirms and teaches that this current earth is going to be destroyed. One last time. Let's open the book. Let's find the place where it is written. 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's begin at verse number 10, Brother Marcus. Work our way down to verse number 13. Watch how Peter, guided by the Spirit of God, speaks about the end time. Go on and read. All right. And the Bible reads, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Brother Marcus, what does the Bible say that's going to happen to the earth? The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Burned up. Keep reading. Seeing that Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation in Godliness? Mm -hmm. Looking for the hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens shall, the heavens being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the Bible goes on to say, nevertheless, nevertheless, we, we according to his promise, mm -hmm. look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And herein is the great confusion. And individuals will look and say, well, the Bible says there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Well, he had already said that the heavens are going to be on fire. The heavens of this earth are going to be destroyed. This earth is going to be destroyed. Heaven and earth as we understand it now is going to be destroyed and we are going to be looking for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness where all of God's children, all the redeemed, we're going to dwell with the Lord during all of eternity. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 5 is often quoted by our denominational friends with the conclusion that Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And they point to this passage of scripture, Marcus, to say, we'll see right here. Jesus is saying that there's going to be an earthly class. They're going to inherit the earth. But my friends, what we must do and what we're compared to do is hold the scripture in context. Keep reading through these Beatitudes. Keep reading through this dissertation of Jesus, this Sermon on the Mount. Go down to verse number 12 of that same chapter, Matthew chapter 5. Verse number 12, because in verse 5, when he talks about the meek inheriting the earth, he's pointing the meek who will inherit the earth to verse number 12, where he says, for great is your reward, where? In heaven. So we're looking for heaven to be our home. And it won't be just 144,000. It will be all of those who have been redeemed from this earth through obedience of the gospel, having, been, having their sins remitted, washed away and added to the one church that we can read about in the scripture wherein is righteousness of which Jesus is the head. My friends, visit with us here at the Church of Christ. It would be our great privilege and our honor to sit down and to discuss with you in greater detail the things that are contained in God's precious book divine where we can seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read make application of that word of God to our life as we rightly divide the word of truth and make the application so that we can be found in direct obedience to the things that God would have us to do through Christ by way of the Holy Spirit as it is revealed in God's book divine. As in all things, Marcus, let's keep the faith till the last amen.
Amen. Amen. Another wonderful explanation to a pertinent Bible question, and one that also leads to the question, what happens to us after death? Thank you, my friend. We're going to leave this word, and then that we'll take the time, uh, Marcus, in more detail to expound upon the things that transpire upon the fact that we live in this earth. First Corinthians chapter 15 makes mention of the Apostle Paul as he's guided by the Spirit of God to teach us that upon death we enter into another realm, the Hadean world, the world wherein it is divided between Tartarus and Paradise. This is exactly what happened to Jesus when he died. His soul departed into the Hadean world when Paul was, or rather when Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, when he says his soul was not left in hell. That word there, hell, is translated Hades. Hades, the Hadean world, is composed of two places. One is Tartarus, the other is paradise. You remember, my friends, in Luke 23, when Jesus is on the cross, one of the dying thieves says to him, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to this dying thief, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Well, we know that Jesus died and his body was buried in Joseph's brand new tomb. His soul departed the, into the Hadean world. His spirit returned back to the Father. He says, uh, right prior to his death, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And so his life force went back to the Father in heaven. His soul went to hell, that is Hades. But Jesus was in the paradise part of Hades along with that other, uh, with, with that thief that he promised would be with him. So when we leave this world, when this physical body of ours lays down in death, just as James talks about when he says in James chapter two, for the body without the spirit is dead. When the spirit, our life force is removed from us, this body dies and the body is going to be buried. The spirit goes back to the father in heaven. The soul of man, which is the real you, the real man, the real person is going into, in, into Hades, either paradise or to, uh, to Tartarus, to await the resurrection that Jesus talks about, or rather Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses we can begin at verse number 10, work our way all the way down to verse number 58. Amen. Amen. So you see, that is our invitation to you, our viewing audience, to come and see what we are doing here at the Agape Church of Christ, or rather what the Lord is doing through us. We invite you to our services. We gather every Lord's Day, at, starting at 10.05 a.m. for our Sunday morning Bible class, and we also have our Sunday morning worship which is following at 11.05 a.m. We're located on 41605 or 4165 FM 521 in Fresno, Texas. So if you're ever in the Fort Bend County area or in the greater Houston, Houston metropolitan area, we invite you to come with us and be with us. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube page, also visit our website. We have a plethora of learning materials there and we have a lot of gatherings online through Zoom that we would love to have you a part of. And with that, we will see you next time on The Place Where It Is Written. We welcome you, our guests, to Agape Church of Christ. We're glad you're here. Please come again. We sing and praise the Lord and the Word of God. Is we welcome you to Agape. We're glad you're here. Amen. Let's keep the faith. Amen. Until the last amen. 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 amen.